Hey guys, welcome back. This will be our last installment. We're going to learn about kites. This is the uh, the last one that we have, uh, our final uh, quadri special quadrilateral that we're going to deal with, and we'll kind of summarize all of our uh, family tree with the quadrilaterals as well. So it should be nice, short, and sweet. We'll get right into it. Kites are actually really simple, so uh, should be fine. So we define a kite as a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent adjacent sides. So if you notice, these two sides on the top are congruent and the ones on the bottom are congruent as well. So it looks kind of like a rhombus, except that two sides are allowed to be longer than the other two sides. Uh, we can actually construct this uh, by swinging the top two sides here with the compass and then swinging the bottom two sides as well, where those two intersect would have to be uh, the lengths uh, for, for the other side. So that gives us this, this kite here. Uh, then we'll use the properties or we'll discover some of the properties of kites. So again, the blue sides are the same, the green ones are as well. If I construct the, the vertical diagonal here, uh, this diagonal is actually going to go along a line of symmetry and there's one line of symmetry and that's honestly the easiest way to remember all the properties of a kite uh, is that we do have a line of symmetry and then there's a little twist with the rhombus as well that comes in here into play as well. So if this are, is our line of symmetry, then we know we also have um, reflexive property, right? The orange diagonal is going to be congruent to itself. So the blue sides are the same, the orange sides are the same, and the green one. So it splits it into two triangles that are going to be congruent triangles. What that means is that the angles, all the corresponding angles have to be congruent as well. So these angles up on the top um, are the same. And in fact, they're actually going to be cut in half or bisected by the line of symmetry. Same with the angles on the bottom. And then the angles on the far side here, um, those are going to be kind of reflective in a, in a sense, right? So the angle that we have on this side is going to be the exact same of the angle that we have on the other side. Uh, the reason for that is because these two triangles are congruent. So these angles are the same and bisected by the diagonal. These angles are the same and bisected by the diagonal. And these angles are the same as well, but they're not going to be bisected by this new diagonal that we have here. Now, whenever we form this diagonal, you can even see that the angles are different on the top than they are on the bottom. Uh, that'll be true pretty much for every kite unless it's a rhombus, but a rhombus is technically a kite as well. Um, then if we just look at the triangles on the top, well, those two are going to be the same. This part of the diagonal is congruent, so we have the same side, the same angles, because those are bisected, right? And the same side here. So by side, angle, side, the two top triangles are the same. We do the same thing down here. By side, uh, angle, side, the two bottom triangles are the same as well. So the easiest way to remember all the properties of a triangle um, oh, oh, is because we have a line of symmetry. So basically, there's one line of symmetry. In this case, it's a vertical line of symmetry, uh, which means all the angles and everything that happens on the right side of the kite has to happen on the left side as well. Uh, one more thing I'll point out is that if these ang these triangles are the same, it means the angles in the middle all have to be the same, and so they are uh, perpendicular as well. So the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So that's a kite. Um, the one thing you really do need to do to be able to solve problems with the kite is to be able to find the line of symmetry. So by looking at the markings, even though those both look like squares, they are kites because we have consecutive angles or consecutive sides that are congruent. Um, and so our line of symmetry on this one would be a vertical line of symmetry because this side matches up with that one, this side matches up with that one. If I did a horizontal line of symmetry, they wouldn't match up because that side's not congruent to that one, that one's not congruent to that one. Then on this one, it would be a horizontal line of symmetry because that side corresponds with that one and that one corresponds with that one, okay? So that means this angle is the same as the angle on the bottom. These angles were cut in half, the diagonals would be perpendicular, and these angles are cut in half as well. You can do the same thing. Those angles are cut in half, bisected here. This angle is the same as that angle, and of course the diagonals would be uh, perpendicular to each other. All right, so in our jacked up quadrilateral uh, family tree, we start out with the, uh, the patriarchy parallelogram, uh, who had two, two children, the uh, rhombus and the rectangle, who, uh, in a Luke and Leia way, became the baby daddy rectangle and the baby mom rhombus. Uh, but what's really jacked up is that from, I guess, the great-great-grandparent or whatever of the quadrilateral, uh, there was also this, I guess, uh, this creepy uncle, the kite, and then the tr side trap, yeah, the trap on the side. Uh, and then the baby daddy rectangle had a trap on the side, and which made the uh, isosceles trapezoid. And then the perpendicular diagonals that we see in a rhombus, that actually comes from the properties of the kite, which is all the more uh, jacked up. Yes, and then the square is the uh, byproduct of the uh, baby mom rhombus and the baby daddy rectangle. So could the... Could the quadrilateral family tree get any worse? I don't think so. And in fact, we are done at this point. So uh, hopefully it was memorable. And you remember all the, the journey that we went through uh, with the uh, quadrilateral family, the perpendicular diagonals that come through here and the uh, congruent diagonals that you see in the rectangle that actually shows up in the isosceles trapezoid, which was begat by 
the uh, the trapezoid and the rectangle as well. All right, so fascinating stuff going on there. And this, this, the poor squares, poor family trees, are all over the place. All right, so that was it, five minutes. Fastest lesson ever. Kites, super simple. Let's do an entire super simple assignment over kites. Uh, then we come back. Next week, we'll be entirely just review. I think I got three. I got two review assignments for you and then a practice test. And then we come back after that. We will take the test over polygons. And that's when I'll grade all of your homework and we'll have grades for the first semester. All right, so the first thing I would recommend is identifying our line of symmetry on this one because of our sides, our markings here. We obviously have a vertical line of symmetry. What that tells me is that angles one and angles two are going to be congruent to each other. Now, what they're equal to, I don't know, but I do know they're congruent. So I'm going to let them be some value x. Um, and then there's really nothing else I can do on this one without drawing the diagonals and then trying to break stuff down. But the best way to do this one is that since it is a, a quadrilateral, we know all the interior angles are going to add up to 360. So I'm going to add them all together, including these two x's plus the 149 that I have elsewhere, and all that adds up to 360. Then subtract 149 from both sides, leaving you with 2x is equal to 211. Then we divide by 2, and we find out that x is equal to 105.5. Now, that is true for both of these angles. They're both 105.5, so uh, there's two answers on the answer bank that you'll cross out for number 1. All right, number three. Now, both diagonals have been drawn for us. Remember, identify the line of symmetry, and then from there, it's pretty simple. So this one, again, has a vertical line of symmetry, which tells me anything that happens on the right side is going to be mirrored on the left side as well. Also, the perpendiculars in the middle are all going to be right angles. So angle 3 right off the bat is 90 degrees. That's pretty simple. Um, the 31 degrees here is going to be mirrored on the other side with angle 1, because, uh, again, our line of symmetry, anything that happens on the right side is going to be the same thing that happens on the left side as well. Um, and then from there, if I have 90 and 43, I can solve for the missing angle here because this is, of course, a triangle and they all add up to 180 degrees. So f the complement, because if this is 90 of the 180, the other two have to be the other 90, right? So the complement of 43 is going to be uh, 47 degrees. So if this is 47 again, whatever happens on the right side is mirrored on the left. So angle four is also 47 degrees. And if this is 43, you know that angle is 43, but that's not angle 2. So to find angle 2, I'm going to look at the triangle we have on the bottom, uh, just like the one we have up here. So we have 31, 90, so the complement of 31 over here is going to be our missing 59 degree angle. Um, and then we have everything, so pretty simple, nothing really that tricky with kites. Uh, so a bit of a review going back with 8 and 9. This is a rhombus, this one's a parallelogram. If you notice, they look exactly the same, but we solve them two different ways. Now, a rhombus is easy because pretty much there's two lines of symmetry and everything is the same. So um, angles 2 and 3 are going to be the same angles. Uh, angle 1, the opposite angle, is the same as 83. So you could actually fill that one in right off the bat. That's actually true for parallelograms as well. So this 75 is the same as that 75, but let me not do more than one problem at the same time. But the way that we solve it from here is going to differ from a parallelogram than we have in a rhombus. Rhombuses are a little bit more forgiving. Pretty much everything is the same. Uh, so on this one, we know that these two angles sorry, are, are, going to be, um, are going to be congruent. So basically we find the supplement of, 53, of 83, then subtract it from one. So when we do that, we find out that these two angles are both gonna be 48.5, because uh, again, they all had to add up to 180 degrees. And then we're done with number eight. But on number nine, it's a little bit different. Uh, this is 67, that doesn't mean this is 67. Like It would be if it was a rhombus, but um, on a parallelogram, we'd actually have to look at it differently. Um, we also know that 2 and 3 are alternate interior angles on a parallelogram, and so those two are going to be the same angle. So whatever's left over, and this is a triangle up here, right? So we've got uh, 75 degrees and uh, 67 degrees, so we add those up and subtract it from 180, which will leave me with the missing 38 degrees, and the alternate interior 38 is going to be the same 38 we have on the bottom here. Um, that also means that this 67 is going to be the same angle we have over here. So the diagonal did not bisect the opposite angles because this was not a rhombus. That is true on a rhombus. So this angle would be the same over there, um, but you can't do that with the parallelogram. So be careful. You have to base it on alternate angles.
Number 16, we have our kite, a vertical line of symmetry. So whatever's going on on the right side is mirrored on the left side. I mean, this 2y is gonna be equal to the 17x plus one. But we can't solve for the x and the y at the same time. So first we need to solve for the x. So to do that, look at the triangle we have on the right side. It is a triangle, so they all add up to 180. So add them all up, the 17x and the 3x will give us 20x. The 38 and the one and the one will give us 40. So we combine all of our like terms there. And again, that's all gonna add up to 180. Uh, subtract 40 from both sides and we get 20x is equal to 140. Then divide everything by 20, which leaves us with um, seven, right? So x is equal to seven. Now that we know that, we can plug it in, solve for the 17x plus one, uh, which will give us 120 degrees. So if this angle on this side is 120, on the other side of the reflection is gonna be 120 as well. So I can say that 2y is equal to 120, and then divide by two, leaving us with y is equal to 60 degrees. So that'll be the final one that we have there. So again, not too bad. Um, number 17, they don't mark these sides, but it appears that we have a horizontal line of symmetry on that one, which means that the, because these sides are a little bit longer than those two, it means the 4x plus one is gonna be equal to the 17, uh, not equal to the 6x minus three. Hopefully you can see the difference, try to make that side a little bit longer than the other one. And clearly the 17 can't be equal to 21, so the only ones that it could be would be the horizontal line of symmetry, not a vertical one. All right, so solve, we subtract one from both sides, leaving us with four x is equal to 16, divide by four, leaving us with x is equal to four. All right, the last one I'm gonna do with you is number 20. Again, on this one, it looks like we kind of have that diagonal is our line of symmetry. So whatever goes on along on this side is the same as this one, meaning the three x minus five is gonna be equal to the two x plus 10. So that's how I'm gonna solve for x. Uh, the next step would be to subtract the two x from both sides, leaving us with x minus five is equal to 10 then add five to both sides, giving us x is equal to 15. Uh, now that I know x is equal to 15, I can plug it in for the two x plus 10, which is this part here, uh, which would give us uh, 30 plus 10 is 40. Okay, so this angle here is 40. Now I need to solve for y. Well, y is up here and here. So I think the easiest way to do it is first reflect this across the uh, line of symmetry. So we have 27 y is now over on this side, which will help. So as soon as I know that 2x plus 10 is equal to 40, I can look at the triangle on the right here, and I know all three of those angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna add these all together and set it equal to 180. So that's gonna give me um, 33y plus the 40 here and the eight would be 48, is all gonna add up to 180. Then I subtract the 48 from both sides, leaving me with 33y is equal to 132 divide by 33, leaving us with y is equal to four. So our final answer would be y would be equal to four. So that's all I have for kites, should be pretty simple. There's a few other problems there, uh, different types of, we've been doing types of like that uh, by whether or not they're true or false. So you guys should be ju just fine on those on your own. If you do have any questions, just make sure to reach out to me on Google Classroom and I'll see you guys uh, next week whenever we're back in person. And uh, we'll do two days of review or one day if you're, an a, if you're on the A track because uh, of Martin Luther King Day. And then the following week we'll take the test. So I'll see you guys around. Have a good one.